The Ultimate Loss Mark chapter 8 verse 35 Whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. What does Jesus mean when he talks about people losing or saving their lives? Nothing in this passage refers to saving oneself from physical death, although a proper relationship with God does limit the number of ways death can claim its victims. The saving of life and the losing of life refer to choices in this life that affect one's eternal destiny. How does a person save his life eternally? Or how is the whole of one's life preserved? Three separate comments by the Lord answer this question. 1. Jesus had gathered his disciples together to inform them about his coming death, burial, and resurrection. The Apostle Peter finds this revelation unacceptable and rebukes Jesus for suggesting such a fate. Mark 8, verse 31 and 32. 2. Jesus responds to Peter's rebuke by telling him and the other disciples that they should devote their minds to the matters that are of interest to God and refrain from imposing their own preferences onto his agenda. After all, a follower of Christ denies his own leanings, denies himself, and takes up the mantle or shield, in other words, cross, of God. Chapter 8, verse 33 and 34. 3. Following the verse in question, Jesus immediately looks at the end result of the choice we all must make, the forfeiture or saving of the soul. Do we pursue the interests of natural humanity or the interests of God? The former might, and sometimes does, produce tremendous advantages in the present life, but it will not satisfy the eternal or entire need of the soul. Mark 8, verse 36 and 37. In order for people's lives to be saved, they must gladly forfeit their own understandings or interests in favor of God's, through which the issues of life both now and into eternity are resolved in the death, burial, and resurrection of his beloved Son. All who genuinely desire to acquire the best in life must understand death as merely another kind of transition in life which is eternal rather than temporal. A person who sees life through God's lens understands life, its blessings and curses, and most importantly, the remedy for its shortcomings, salvation in Christ. Too many fail or refuse to see God's benevolent role in his pursuit of humankind, and therefore they spend their lives trying to make their mark on the world before life passes them by. In truth, we ultimately forfeit everything if we live to make our mark on the world. It is better for all if we struggle to make his mark on the world. Only by accepting God's exclusive remedy for man's waywardness can we resolve the issues of life and soul. Just as Jesus warned the disciples not to do the work of Satan by denying the truth of his role as Son of God and Savior of man, Mark 8, 31 to 33, so we too must ensure that our flawed or short-sighted interests don't interfere with the message of God's soul-saving grace. The cross, Christ's death and subsequent resurrection is what the world needs. His marks save souls, not ours. Each person is responsible to lose his or her life, in other words, dreams, interests, and understandings, to be eternally saved through accepting and appreciating God's perspective. In the fog that clouds our minds, we must unashamedly trust in God 
who lights the way. Mark 8, 38.